Good evening, everybody. I'm Lyric Winnick. I am president of the BCC PTSA. I have a um, student who is a member of the class of 2021 and has successfully launched a college. And I have a junior. So, um, but what I had mentioned is that when I first came to BCC as the parent of a freshman, which now seems a very long time ago, um, I this was the most helpful presentation I attended, that I learned so much from the students and my only wish was that my own student could have heard what they, what seniors and juniors had to say. So I'm very, very hopeful that um, this will be the same for you. We have such a great lineup and I would also really encourage you, it's being recorded, encourage your student to watch. If they're not on with you, send them back because this is going to be some great wisdom about how to navigate high school and to get the most out of BCC. And I will now stop talking and I'm going to let our presenters introduce themselves and just say what grade they're in and something interesting about themselves. So we're going to start with Hannah Wilkes, who is the um, president of the school-wide SGA. And I'm just going to let her also then pull in everybody else on the list. She helped create an amazing list. Thank you, Hannah. All right, hi everyone. Uh, as Lyric said, my name is Hannah Wilkes and I am president of the school-wide student government at BCC. I'm a senior, 12th grade, which is sort of crazy. Um, and I guess something, I could tell you a little bit about my extracurriculars is my fun fact. Uh, so I do sort of a lot. Um, I'm president of the Science Honor Society as well and a member of BCC's national and local debate teams, uh, as well as I did robotics in the past and I don't know, just all over. Oh, also BCC Hikes, which is a club that you should join because it's a good time. Thank you, Johanna. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll pass it off to Johanna. Hi, um, I hope you can guess what my name is from the label and from Hannah repeating it twice. I'm Johanna. Um, I am a senior as well. Uh, I'll follow suit with the club things. I'm president of or co-president of the pre-med club and i um, about to start a German club. So I'm very pumped for that. Who says you can't start things as a senior? You certainly can. Um, and yeah. Okay, I'm going to pass it to Sanjana. Hi, my name is Sanjana Sarandran. I'm the president at BCC. I am one of BCC's biggest students at all. And I'm the principal at the end of school. I think we need your volume up slightly. Um, hi, my name is Sanjana Sarangaran. I am one of BCC's debate junior captain, and I also do NSBA, which is BCC's national debate team, and I'm a junior here at BCC. All right, we'll pass it to Carter. Carter. Hello, my name is Carter. I'm a senior, which as Hannah said, doesn't quite feel real, so that's fun. And following the trend of extracurriculars, um, I do mock trial, I do rocketry, and I am also starting a club. Johanna is right, it's never too late to start something. Um, it's kind of like a save the reef type thing. So that's fun. Okay, I'll just keep going, Grace. <laughs> Hello, my name is Grace. I'm also a senior and I'll jump on the bandwagon of the extracurriculars. Um, I'm one of the senior captains of the BCC debate team here and president of National Honor Society as well. And I do a lot of music at BCC. Hannah, would you like to pass it off or should I? Haroon, let's go. Okay, hey, I'm Haroon. Um, I'm out at BCC soccer right now, come support. Um, extracurricular wise, um, I'm the SGA president for the class of 22. Um, so that's a senior class right now. I wrestle um, varsity, 145 pounds. Um, and I work, which um, that's important for some families. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, I'd love to answer. All right, Ava. Hi everyone, I'm Ava Bomji. I'm also a senior at BCC and a few of the clubs that I'm a part of are um, Acapella and Model UN, both where I'm co-president. And then I also am a part of uh, Mock Trial with Carter. All right, Teresa. 
Hi, my name is Teresa Montoya. I am uh, one of the leaders for Minority Scholars Program. I also started the Latino Student Union and I am one of the executive. Oh, give me one sec. <laughs> Sorry. So um, as I said, I, start, I started the Latino Student Union and I am one of the executive producers for BCC TV, our Emmy award winning school TV show. Tommy. Yep, uh, I'm Tommy Sofranoff. I'm a junior. Uh, some of my clubs at BCC, this is my third year as a uh, class of 2023 secretary. I'm on the debate team and in the past I've been involved with BCC theater. All right, Nahoman. Hello, my name is Nahoman. I'm a senior. Um, I'm part of the National Math Honor Society. I'm also one of the leaders for YFE for Equity which I'm sure you guys heard of. Um, I'm also, I've also been in MSP and the uh, Ethiopian and Eritrean Association. Hi, right, Ting Ting. Hi, my name is Ting Ting. I'm a junior this year. And um, for my extracurriculars, I'm the treasurer for the class of 23 SGA. And I'm the co-president for our Asian Student Union and Girls to Code Club and the co-treasurer for a BCC Girl Up Club. And I'm also on the debate team, like a lot of the other members, and I'm involved in some other extracurriculars as well. Okay, and I'm not sure if Sam and JD are here, but they will be joining us in a little bit. Uh, Sam is VP of Schoolwide with me, as well as on, he's on BCC Crew. And then JD is on our varsity football team. He's in the engineering program. Uh, he probably does other clubs that I don't even know. Um, but as you can see, we have like super involved, super amazing panel of students here that are going to be able to answer all of your questions. And Lyric, I don't really know what questions we're gonna jump into. So if you wanna maybe take over there. <laughs> Sure, I'm actually trying, this was supposed to be a large meeting and we're not get, it's not, it didn't set that up. It's driving me crazy. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this, um, but I'm going to throw out the first question, which is basically to start with what has been the best part of high school and what has been the most challenging? I could take this one. Um, I have come to realize the best part of high school, as cheesy as it sounds, is like the people there. Like I didn't realize how much online sucked until I was back in person. I got to just say hi to people and make new friends and stuff like that. But um, yeah, the social aspect of, of school just makes it a lot easier to learn when you have people around you who are also like interested in the stuff you're interested in or even just willing to help you out on a subject you're not as like keen on and stuff like that. And um, I'd say the uh, worst part kind of goes hand in hand with that. Online school sucked. That was the worst part of high school so far. But um, yeah, I think the most challenging thing is just when you don't really feel like you're in a school setting. So. Hi, my name is Sort of piggybacking off of that. Um, I agree, like the social aspects of high school have been one of the best parts, but also going to BCC. For me, it's been finding sort of classes and pathways in the school that I've really enjoyed and like found my passions within. Um, so like freshman year, I signed up for the intro to engineering and design class, and I'm about to finish the, or um, I just started the engineering uh, design and development class, which is the final class of the engineering pathway at BCC. So one of the best parts for me has been able to, uh, to be able to identify things that I might want to be doing, you know, way down the line in my life uh, in, in a high school setting, which is a little bit slower and a little bit more like digestible. Uh, and sort of what Johanna said, like online school was, was really not great. Uh, probably the worst part of my high school experience so far. Just kind of building off of what Hannah said about like finding your passions. I think the best thing for me about BCC specifically is how relevant a lot of the coursework feels. Like sometimes in school, when motivation gets really hard for me, it's a lot of the times because I feel disconnected from what I'm learning. And at BCC, we have such amazing teachers 
you know, like there's really great kids in the classes, like Johanna was saying, you know, BCC really is a special place people wise. And um, with pathways like the engineering program, it really feels like what I'm doing is for a purpose and that keeps me super motivated. All right. Anybody else want to take that about what is the um, what is the you know what has been the most challenging and what's been um, the best part? I mean, also on the challenging part, what you know you've kind of struggled with. Um, I can definitely speak on the most challenging part. I know one of the reasons that Hannah asked me to um, be here tonight was because I did not go to Westland or Silver Creek for middle school. I went to a really small middle school and then came to BCC, which is like the opposite of a small school. Um, it's more like a small college. And I definitely felt challenged freshman year um, where I didn't know anybody except for one person um, to start the school year. And I felt really challenged to get to know a friend, like a group of friends who had the same interests as me. Um, but I found like over the years that that's not really important yet. And I was able to find a group of friends that have different interests, um, as well as finding people in the same interest as me, which one of mine is um, music and musical theater. And I was able to really get involved sophomore year in the musical theater program, which really helped me over that hump of not knowing anybody in such a big school. Um, but I will definitely say that coming from such a small community to such a large community was really difficult um, at first, but it got easier as I was able to branch out and that sort of thing. Great. I'm still struggling with why Zoom hates me tonight. <laughs> um, okay. But this is going to be recorded for people who might get texts from their friends who can't get in or whatever. Um, so how, what is the, what are some of the ways that you have found that are most successful for staying on top of your work and not having to, um, and not having to, you know, worry about what it is that you're doing and, and not falling behind. Cause I think a lot of kids struggle with that. And that's also a big change in being back in person. Um, I can speak on this. So I actually just started like COVID really taught me how to, that, how important it is to stay on top of your work. Um, because like, you, you know, you, you have all of your like work laid out for you. And um, I've always like been kind of an overachiever when it comes to like school and like my grades and stuff, but I always kind of like, uh, like procrastinated. And this year I really like, um, I have found new strategies like going to the library after school, like not being in like my room because like being in the same environment where you sleep and you're doing your work is kind of like not, it's not that good for like your like mental well-being and I learned that a lot like because of COVID because I had to do like all of my schoolwork and then sleep and like have my social life like in my own in my own house so definitely like stay on top of your work do your homework like every single day if you can't focus at school like go to the library like go with a friend and um like take notes like write down like your assignments, like that really has helped me a lot. And it really like you can get good grades as long as like you do your work. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. Also, if anyone out there is kind of like the creative type, I have a bullet journal. I swear by it. It's like it's such a fun way to make you feel like you're being productive, like just writing down your tasks and having like a nice like mix between getting to be a little artistic and getting to be um, work oriented in the same little notebook that you can bring around with you um, throughout the school day is like such a blessing. I've, got, I've had it all through middle school, high school, definitely a fan. In terms of like actually doing work, like Teresa said, you just have to like really sit down and commit to what you're doing. And it, what's good is that if you start as a freshman, like by the time you get to senior year, your classes have gotten progressively harder, right? So like you start to like pick up these strategies and you start to like get like a gradual increase in workload, which is also helpful because then it's not all at once, but you can kind of adjust to um, learning how to do these things. I know that was pretty broad, but. 
Um, like Johanna said, I also had a bullet journal that I used especially over quarantine. And it was super helpful. I love doing it. And I'm probably one of the most like least artistic people ever, <laughs> but doing a bullet journal really um, made me feel creative. And I really enjoyed it and I never really enjoyed doing art, but that was really helpful for me. It was also a really good de-stressor. Um, but I actually started using a planner, like an actual planner this year, and I also really recommend that if you um, just like to write things down super fast, um, which I have learned that that's the best option for me. I've also, I mean, I know that a bunch of us are in IB, so we had this discussion in the past few days about time management. Um, one of our teachers was talking about it, and he suggested doing this, like, 20, 20 on rule and then take a break. And I've noticed that I've done that in the past throughout school where if I have, like, a 20 to 30 minute interval that I'm not doing anything instead of, you know, scrolling on Instagram or getting on TikTok, if I just do like 20 to 30 minutes of homework, I'll feel a lot better throughout the day. And then later on, I'll really thank myself for doing it because the more you do it, the more it just cuts down towards the end of the day when you're like getting home and you're tired, you don't want to spend two hours doing homework. So having um, all that stuff kind of done throughout the day is really helpful. Yeah, I like to um, just use like a pre-made planner and just quickly write stuff down um, as it's assigned. And then I like to try and start on my homework, like right when I get home, because then it's really nice if you can feel like you've done all of your work by like seven or eight. And then um, instead of still feeling like you have stuff to do and stressing out about it, you can kind of like let yourself leave the school like mindset for a while and just relax. Yeah, I agree with Tommy. Um, I think the moment that you get home, you still have that school mindset. So if you like get started on your work, you'll the chances are like you'll finish it um, a lot quicker than if you like continue to put it off until like the very last minute or even like the next day. Um, and then additionally, like I don't know about everyone else, but I've always been the type of person that likes to plan everything out. So I like to have a time blocked schedule and I find like Google Calendar is like my go-to where I will plan out when I'll do my homework, when I have my other events, when I have like sports extracurriculars going on. I think that having like a structured schedule and like starting from freshman year, you'll find yourself building a schedule that you can like hold yourself accountable to. That's really helpful in terms of keeping up with your work and not, not procrastinating and falling behind. Yeah, another thing I would add is just like the really, the importance of not falling behind on assignments in terms of like if you have like an English essay due and you don't turn it in on time and then you're trying to make that up while you're getting new work in all your other classes too it's really really hard to catch up so staying on top of work and turning things in by the due dates is something that's like super important and super helpful and sort of part of that is also making schedules so like in my history class we have homework that's due every week um, and my teacher gives us a schedule that's sort of like, oh, Monday, you should do this part and Tuesday, you should do this part, um, which is something that's super helpful. And if your teacher doesn't give you a schedule like that, making one for yourself for bigger assignments and sort of breaking it down into different tasks and planning what you're going to do each day makes it so much easier to stay on top of it and not get super overwhelmed by having to um, like, you know, do everything all the night before it's due and procrastinating and putting things off. So just sort of. I guess planning things out um, was really helpful to stay on top of things. And hi, I'm, I'm Sam. Sorry, I was late because I just got home from practice. So um, I just want to introduce myself too. Yeah. Um, something else that you could do is like download the Canva web, uh, app and like you can go on calendar and like see the dates. Um, and then whatever's due that day, you can just do all your assignments so that you know that you won't miss them. Uh, Something else that I had learned during high school also was that like sacrificing your time is going to happen. Like you're going to, before COVID, what I used to do a lot was go during tap if I had any questions or go to the writing center or go during lunch or go during like the morning. Like I used any time that I had just to get help because I knew that I wouldn't have time um, at home. So yeah, just making sure that you're taking the opportunity to like ask questions whenever you can.
something that's really helped me stay on top of things is making work as enjoyable as possible. Like obviously not every assignment is going to be fun, but like finding some relaxing music that you like and like having a nice clean workspace with like a little plant or something has been something that's really helpful to me. I'm not. Yes. A lot of the, we have a bunch of questions too around organization because people are finding it just overwhelming. And um, how do you manage the overwhelm? Because especially as ninth and 10th graders, it is even as juniors and seniors, it becomes overwhelming. It's sort of four years of overwhelm, but you know, after a while you kind of learn how to do it. Yeah, so I can speak to being overwhelmed with uh, work and extracurriculars. So just to give you all a sense, um, I'm in the full IB program. I do the engineering program. I do student government and debate. Needless to say, I spend a lot of my lunches in meetings and I spend a lot of my outside of school doing homework and meetings. And especially in the past few weeks, the transfer from uh, online school to in-person school, I have watched my like free time disintegrate and it's been really stressful. So something from the last question, the last question that got brought up a lot was this, this is my planner. If you don't have a planner and you are in high school, I don't know how you're succeeding. Um, I've had a planner every single year of high school. And just to reiterate the very important things that have been said before, having a planner, even just a, an old notebook, like it doesn't need to be a, an official planner where you're writing down your homework. Uh, maybe it's Tuesday and you have debate during lunch. Writing that down is something that you so that you know ahead of time that you have to go to. Um, Ting Ting spoke a little bit about blocking out your time, but maybe it's not, okay, I know I'm gonna spend 20 minutes on my math homework and then 40 minutes on my history notes. Maybe it's, okay, when I get home from school, I'm gonna have my snack and then spend an hour on homework. I'm gonna go down my list of first period, second period, third period, and you know, trying to get through that as efficiently and successfully as possible. Um, Something else, just to reiterate, that was said before, I think Sam said it, was don't let your work pile up. I promise you, you're not going to do it over the weekend. Or if you are going to do it over the weekend, do you really want to spend your entire weekend doing homework? Probably not. Um, so really making sure that maybe even like getting all your weekend homework done that Friday afternoon, if you can, is a really great method to, to prevent being overwhelmed is to let yourself have the weekend to relax. Um, yeah, those, those I think are really big ones is writing down everything, um, every meeting, just so that you know ahead of time, okay, I'm not going to have that lunch open uh, to, to study this. Um, and also just if you're really overwhelmed and it's a certain class that you think is assigning a ton of homework or you think it's just a certain teacher, sometimes going to your teacher and being like, hey, uh, you're assigning 20 pages of notes a night and I am having so much trouble keeping up. Can we come up with a method? Do you have any pieces of advice? Because most of the teachers of BCC have been teaching their subject for years. They, they've seen students in the past struggle possibly the same way that you are, and they quite possibly have the best possible information on, on how to prevent you from being super uber duper overwhelmed. Um, and a, another possibility for just that in that same vein is asking fellow students, uh, you know, did you take this class? How did you stay on top of the reading? Um, and maybe they have old notes that you can look at to maybe uh, give you a, a, the right headspace as you're heading into take it, reading a new, a new chapter or something. Or maybe they're just like, look, I, I took that exam at the end of the year. The amount of notes that I took did not equal the amount of effort that was necessary. This is what I'd recommend uh, for me. And you can sort of adapt that to your own lifestyle and your own needs. Um, just going off of that, I do about like 10 different extracurricular activities along with like starting the new IB program. So I often get overwhelmed. And similarly to what Hannah said, I just like block out my schedule. So every night before the next day, I just try to come up with a daily plan for what I want to do um, the moment I get up and then throughout the entire day. And that just helps me stay on task. And then I always try to have at least one hour to myself where I can just like talk to friends, um, meditate, draw, or do something that really helps improve my mental health. Because sometimes it we do get really stressed and overwhelmed with school. So just having like a few, um, a few hour 
your like a few minutes to yourself where you can just like recuperate is always really good. Um, I would just like to add that um, when you're an underclassman, like you have less work. And then when you become like an upperclassman, you have more work. So just make sure that like you're not you don't have like 20 like clubs and you, you're just giving like 5% to each one of them. Like pick the ones that you're truly passionate about or you like uh, like see yourself like doing something with it and focus on those. Because I remember sophomore year, like I was in like Latin dance. I did like, I just did like so many things on top of like everything that I have. And I, and I wanted to be like on every single club, like do, still do art, like get a job, like see my friends. Like, and it was just not realistic because like I, um, it was very stressful and I deal, like I, I already know, like you have to like kind of know yourself because a lot of people can work under a lot of pressure, but personally I can't. So even though I do have like a lot of extracurriculars and I'm taking like a lot, a lot of AP classes, like I still like, I decided to pick like three things, like three extracurriculars that I'm very like passionate about and just like focus on those. Um, because I, I think that's really helped me um, like focus on my work and have time for like my friends as well. Um, I think like you have to make sure that like you um, take care of your own mental health first because like it, that's just a very important thing. <laughs> yeah, Teresa brings up an absolutely excellent point. Like even past organization, like you're not going to be able to do everything. Like, even if you have like your perfect planner and you have like a block schedule and like you do everything like exactly by the book and whatever, like you're either going to get extremely tired from that or get stressed because you're not keeping up with what you wrote down for yourself. And so like, sometimes you just have to step back and be like, okay, what, what here is essential and what is stressing me out more than it's making me happy. Like, obviously, you know, if you have like health class and that's a required course, you're going to be like, okay, I need to take that. That's like non-negotiable. But like for me, like first two years of high school, I did debate club. I was really into it. I, I researched and I did all my crap, excuse my language. And I, um, <laughs> and I spent so much time on this club and then come junior year, like it was online. And I was like, wait a minute, I actually don't like debate. And it's, <laughs> and and it's never been something that I've actually enjoyed it's just been something that I thought I had to do or that I thought would be good for a college application or something like that like if, if it's something that you don't enjoy and it's something that you talked yourself into or that is not actually essential for either your success or like your like you know graduation or something practical like that like it's okay to drop it like it took me a too long to realize that honestly but like it's okay to just be like okay wait this is what I'm interested in. not in this not this and I can move on from there and I'm gonna be happier and like more organized for it just to sort of piggyback off that another thing that it's just really helpful with not getting overwhelmed with a million different things that you have to do is sort of setting priorities um but even just like on a daily basis in terms of things that like you really need to make time for. For me, like I do crew and I really, really like that. And that's something that I have to make time for. I go to practice every day. Um, and that could be also, you know, if you do whatever club you do that you really like, or you just need to have your half an hour to watch TV before you go to bed or something like that. If there's anything like that, that just makes you happy that you know you need to prioritize and make time for that. And then that sort of leaves you with, what other time you have to get your homework done. And when you're doing your homework, also you can prioritize that instead of having a million different assignments that are ongoing and you don't even know, like sometimes I look at my agenda book and I see I have like so many assignments written down and I don't even know what to start on. Um, but to sort of look at like, okay, well, this is due tonight. So I need to do that right now. And if some assignments aren't due till later to say, well, is it really worth me staying up really late to work on this? Um, and then to not sleep well and be exhausted tomorrow, or is this something that I can do tomorrow? If maybe I have more time tomorrow to sort of prioritize what needs to get done, um, which like writing everything down to just see it visually what you have to do. And then you can sort of prioritize what needs to happen when, um, can help with that stuff. This is also a really small thing, but like something I do, if there's an assignment where you're like, ew, I don't want to do that one, do it first. 
it's counterintuitive, but like, if you get the, like, I've noticed I'll have like four homework assignments and I'm like, oh my God, I have so much homework. And then I complete the one that's just been staring me in the face with like this really yucky look. And I'm like, wait a minute, I actually have nothing to do besides that thing that I just was really dreading. And then it just feels a lot better. That's like my pro tip. Also take all this with a grain of salt. Like people are talking and they're saying like, this is my schedule and I stick to it all the time. I doubt that they do this every single day. I don't do what I'm saying every single day. That is completely fine, especially as a freshman or sophomore. Like you can just sometimes be like, okay, no, today is not my day. Like Sam was saying, I'm not gonna stay up till midnight for X, Y, Z. Like tomorrow I will be better and I can promise myself that much. Yeah, picking, piggybacking on that. I feel like one of the things that I would tell to my younger self, if I could like go back in time was like, if you have like a bad day where you don't get stuff done, don't let that push you into another bad day of not getting stuff done. I think it's really important to like, if you had an unproductive day and like you didn't get all your stuff done on your list, take a deep breath, make a new list and understand that like you're going to be okay. And just overall, I think the high school journey is a lot of like learning to understand who you are. Like starting from freshman year, you just came out of like middle school and whether like you're a new student or you're coming with like a group of friends, you're still learning the process of like, oh, what do I like? What do I want to do? Like, go explore everything. Freshman year is technically, like, the year to do that in some half of, like, sophomore year. But, like, the moment that you hit the upperclassman years, junior, senior year, you're going to be really busy. And that's the time where you should be understanding, like, oh, this is where, like, how, like, oh, if you like debate, like, you're going to stick with debate. If you like doing SJ, you'll, you'll stick with doing SJ. Like, you split that up and then, um like you are more narrowed down and you're you won't be as overwhelmed because in addition to like debate may be stressful like I find debate really stressful and I kind of forget like oh I have this assignment due the next day but at the same time like I enjoy what I am doing in debate and that adds that like aspect that keeps me going and then just another tip on prioritizing I split my list um into a must, should, and like could type of list. So the must are like, oh, I need to get this done by tonight. The should is like, I should probably do this, but I could also put it off until tomorrow. And then the could is like, it's just there. I could do it if I like really need to, but I can also leave it off because like the deadlines until next week. Just like, that's a format that I kind of suggest. That sounds great. Um, I have two questions for you now. Basically, when, what is the best way to ask for help when you need it? And also, you guys are you know, juniors and seniors. You've gotten your act together. But somewhere, one of you had to be a freshman kind of flying by the seat of your pants and not really sure what to do and not able to organize your planner and just sort of a deer in the headlights and did not have it all together. And, you know, what what are some of the ways that you kind of got it together? Did one of you ask for help? Did you look for examples to other people? What happened to make to, you know, kind of get you on a on an upward track? Oh, I'd like to talk about that question. And just to introduce myself, I know it came a little late. I'm JD, I'm a senior. And um, yeah, some extra cooker stuff, I guess, is like I play football for BCC too. So for, uh, for that question, one of the things I would say is the best place to start is just like anywhere. Just the most important part about if you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed or behind is to just pick a point and put your head down and work a little. And because like if you keep letting things build up, then it just gets more and more of a problem and it snowballs. But if you pick one thing, even if you're not sure what to pick, you're like, should I do like the hardest thing first? Should I start with the easy assignments and work my way up? Work my way up. I would just say like choose one thing, like focus for an hour, put your phone away, do whatever you have to do to focus and just work. And then like after you've done some work and after you've like say maybe completed an assignment or half of assignment, you'll feel better and you'll kind of like know what to do more, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. And sorry, um, just BCC itself, like if you feel like you're alone and you're drowning in all this work, BCC has a lot of different support systems that it, it can offer help with. 
Um, so from a sort of social emotional side of things, uh, your counselor is someone who you, you know, can turn to. Um, the amount of times that I have shown up to Miss Connie's, uh, who's my counselor, uh, her room just being like, I, there is so much going on. Um, or like even this year, literally this past week, um, I was in a class, uh, an art class, and I'm not really an artsy kid. And I was freaking out. And she was like, this is how, this is what we're going to do. So if you're feeling really overwhelmed, you feel like you're in the wrong class, still as we're in this like first three weeks of school, if you're being like, you feel like you're in, you know, honors algebra two, and you should be in on level algebra two, because honors algebra two is just moving too fast. Uh, your counselor is, is the first person to go talk to. Um, but you know, if we're later into the year, you're sort of deep in the class, and you're really overwhelmed, BCC has a lot of tutoring and educational support. So we have TAP, which I know is still in the works, it's still being organized at BCC, but as it gets organized, those are teachers who are there because they're there to help you with your homework. They're there to help you catch up on your work and they're there to help you get organized in a class. Um, and then every honor society, so science, math, English, uh, Spanish, French, I don't know, there are a lot at BCC. Um, there are students, oh, National Honor Society too, which is more general. Every single one of those societies has students who are part of that society to help tutor in the kinds of classes that they're passionate about. So like in science honor society, we tutor all of the science classes from biology, chemistry, physics. We have students that have taken those classes who have been through this sort of overwhelming feelings that you're going through right, right in that moment and, and are there to support you and to provide you whatever kind of sort of educational support that they, they can. Um, so those are some of the sort of academic and social emotional things that BCC can offer if you're feeling super overwhelmed, which is very relatable when you're taking hard classes or even not so hard classes and you're just taking a lot and you're doing a lot of extracurriculars. You know, we all get overwhelmed. High school's not easy. Uh, and BCC has the resources to, to help you. Yeah, and I would say like, make sure to advocate for yourself because I there have been so many times where I have even tried to avoid teachers that are there, there to help me in my work, like, because I feel ashamed or embarrassed that I didn't do like an assignment or that I didn't finish my homework or something. Like, you don't wait until you're at your breaking point to ask for help, like go in and you can like make a plan on how to catch up with your work with your teachers. And if they are mocking you or not supporting you, tell your counselor. But usually like your teachers are not gonna like try to bring you down. They're gonna be there to help you. So like advocate for yourself, don't be afraid. How do you get to know your teachers and your counselors? You know, your teacher has 150 students, something like that. You're in a class of like 30 kids. I, you know, how do you, it, it, they're, they're changing all the time. How do you get to know them? And how do you, how do you get to know your counselor? I mean, I think there are a lot of kids who are not even sure where the counseling office is. Yeah, I can definitely talk about this um, because I really struggled freshman year in my math class. I was like, I used in middle school, I got all A's. I was really good in math. And then in high school, I like got my first grade back and it was really not good at all. And I like started to notice that as a trend um, in the first few weeks of high school. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? So I decided um, that I was just going to go into my math teacher anytime he had office hours and just talk to him about the unit, ask him if he could give me like any information about the upcoming unit that I could go ahead and study that night or um, before we started that unit. And I really... Uh, found myself getting to know my teacher during his office hours, which are like during lunch and before school and after school. Um, and that really helped me a lot. Um, and then I know my teacher sophomore year in math, which I also struggled with slightly, um, she was one of the teachers who helped in TAP, which is, as I think Hannah was saying, like the after school tutoring program with teachers. And especially if your teacher is one of those teachers helping out at TAP, it is really beneficial because it's one way to get to know your teacher super one on one, as well as get like personalized help because you know you're learning the same thing um, that that teacher is teaching at the same time, which I found really beneficial both freshman and sophomore year, um, especially. But I would say that just trying to go into your teacher who maybe you're like, oh, I don't think this teacher really likes me or I'm just not learning the way they teach like I just don't learn that kind of way just going in and talking to them about how you feel and 
what you think um, you're missing, like maybe you're missing a visual aspect or something like that, it can help a lot. Uh, yeah, I, oh, sorry. You got this, Johanna. Sorry, go ahead, I've been talking everyone's ear off. Okay, I was just gonna say, as for getting to know my counselors, I think one of the best things that I've done is just like, went to the counseling office. Like a lot of the time, um, there will be a little bit of a line, but you can basically walk in there and talk with your counselor within 20 minutes, nine times out of 10, unless it's ridiculously crowded. And that's been a great way to um, get help when I need it. And it's, it doesn't have to be a stressful thing to go to your counselor. Like it doesn't have to be this eight email chain and then it's on your Google calendar. And like you, you can just walk in a lot of the time. <laughs> and as for getting to know my teachers, the main way that I've done that is um, just being engaged in class is I think a big thing, like asking questions, you know, talking to them just about like little stuff like before and after class. That's a good way to like build a strong relationship over time so that when you are struggling, it's a lot easier to go to that teacher and ask for help because you already have a little bit of a relationship with them. I have something for, um, I was actually, sorry, John, you go first. No uh, problem, go ahead. Okay. Oh, for, uh, for getting to know teachers, like, <laughs> I guess like a hack pro tip or something like that is if you like just talk to the teacher just a little bit after class, like especially if you talk to the teacher like about the subject that they teach that they're really interested in, like if you in math, for example, if you ask your math, you're like, a question about something that happened in class and you give them like a minute to explain it to you after class you're not going to be late to your next class but you're going to bond with that teacher a little bit and they're going to see that you have an interest in the subject and that makes them more invested in like wanting to see you succeed which is always a good thing just like a few extra sentences with the teacher after class especially about something you're both interested in builds up a lot over time and you'll have a relationship with that teacher and also just something, um, if you're reaching out to a teacher in general, just over email, putting your best foot forward is the best way that you're going to develop a, a positive relationship. So that means not sending an email in all lowercase, uh, not being just like if the question, it doesn't have a subject and it just has like, how do I do question six on the homework packet, question mark, and you don't even sign your name. Um, I've spoken to teachers about email etiquette and they can get really frustrated if they feel like the email, it just isn't very respectful. So starting with a like, dear miss, blah, blah, blah. I hope this email finds you well. I started the math homework today and I'm really stuck on number 17 on uh, the, the packet. Is there any way we could meet during lunch this week to go over it? I'm really stuck. Or are we going to go over it in class tomorrow? I'm really stuck. Thanks so much your name. Um, little things like that can be really beneficial. And even if the teacher just responds with like K, like, which some teachers do that and it happens, um, Mr. Gallagher. But like <laughs> um, really putting your best foot forward is, is a great way. Cause I have sat through teachers being like, oh, I just got this email from a student and all it has is a question and it's in all lowercase. And you know, some teachers are old. They really appreciate really nice email etiquette. And it's just a nice way to, to put your best foot forward. It's just be respectful in the email and, you know, follow old timey email etiquette, not texting etiquette. Yeah, I just, I agree with everything that's been said, but like, just like JD said, like, if you have, like, you know, in class and you're sitting there and you have a question in the back of your head and you're like, ah, oh, that's dumb. Just ask it anyway. Like, even if you don't want to ask it in front of the entire class, ask it with your teacher anyway because either they're going to just like, you know, appreciate that you were vulnerable or they're going to be like, wow, that was like such a profound question. Like I should pay more attention to this student. Like just little things like that are, are really great. And um, making sure that you just like, this is going to sound really terrible. Like be yourself, you know, like be authentic in what you're saying. Like if you have a weird comment or if you have a question that you're kind of unsure of, just say it anyway, because the worst thing that could happen is your teacher is like, mm, talk to me after class or whatever. Like, like it's just the better option is always to just get everything out in the open, unless it's like offensive. But I don't think anyone would do that, so. 
you know, we've talked a lot about things with school, but part of school is, as you all pointed out earlier, being social and actually seeing people. And one thing that can be kind of awkward when you go to high school is making friends. You know, maybe your middle school friend group has kind of broken up. Maybe you just don't have as much in common with your middle school friends, whatever it is. So what do you suggest for, or you just want to broaden it and have some more friends? What do you guys suggest for good ways to find new people, make new friends, kind of broaden your group? Or if you're new, find a group to begin with. One thing that um, like I found really helpful was joining, like join a sports team or a club. Uh, like obviously, like you might not be interested in sports, that might not be a thing, but we have tons of clubs. Like, like in most scenarios, there's probably a club that you would like. And if you have free time, you can participate in. And I think that's really helpful because one, if you go in as like a freshman or a sophomore, not only do you immediately know other people in your own grade who can, you could be like, hey, like, can I take on at lunch or something like that? You also immediately know a lot of upperclassmen, which is just a whole nother benefit. So I would say, especially because our club there is coming up soon, um, definitely consider looking at a club or a sports team. Yeah, I totally agree with JD. And I think all of us are really going to pound in that thing of like getting into extracurriculars because um, it really does make the biggest difference at such a large school. I know that freshman year, I, as everyone does, we join a bunch of clubs and then we don't go to any after like the third week. And it really um, is not helpful when you don't dedicate yourself to a few clubs. I know um, all of us, I think we all said that the clubs that we're in, which was probably not the club that we thought we were going to stay in since freshman year. Like I know I didn't even start really going to mock trial or acapella until sophomore year or in mock trial. I didn't start till junior year, but even before then I was doing other clubs that um, really helped solidify friends in school. And it's not like you're going to see the same friend at every single club that you join, but you'll be able to branch out. And that way, when you walk down the hallway, you'll just see people that you know, but it's not like they're like, in your friend group, it's just someone that you have that you know who you can say hi to or ask questions about, um, like classes that you have together. It's just, like I said, really helpful to join a club um, and extracurriculars. Yeah, and for me as well, not even just with clubs, but for me with music, my freshman year, I joined um, the jazz band. And coming into BCC, I didn't really have like one main friend group, but kind of since then doing pit orchestra, doing pep band, doing jazz band, and going on those music trips, I've like formed my main friend group and I've made so many friends in music. Um, I feel like just go getting involved with like a department at BCC, whether it be like the engineering pathway that Hannah and Carter do, or like doing the music program, I think that you just get to know everyone within that smaller group, as well as like in the IB diploma, the IB diploma program, um, kind of finding your way in a smaller group within such a big school um, like BCC is really helpful to find like true friends that you have like the same interests as and can be your friends even in college. Yeah, so I would say that I am a pretty outgoing person and I really like talking to a lot of people, but at the same time, I'm really shy. So sometimes it's hard for me to like open up to new people. So what I found was when I went to the club fair in ninth grade, I saw the mock trial booth and I was really interested in joining the club. And so I did. And what ended up happening was that I met all of these really cool people in the club who shared the same interests as me, like Carter and Ava. So um, it was great just meeting all of those people, especially since a lot of the people in the club were upperclassmen. And I think that goes for a lot of clubs too. So you get to meet upperclassmen and you get to be friends with them too and learn what they have to say. So it's just a great opportunity to meet friends, like just going to different clubs and finding out what you're interested in just helps you find people with the same interests and you're gonna make a lot of great friends. And, um, oh, Hannah, you can go. You go, you go. Okay, also, this is common sense, but just be nice. Like, talk to people, like, open yourself up because surprisingly, like, like let's say, like, freshman and sophomore year, you had your friend group and stuff, but then, like, the next year, like, none of your friends are in your classes. Like, and you don't want to, like, shut yourself out and, like, think, like, you know, oh, these people are lame or something. You, like, like, just be nice to everyone because, like, you're always going to find, like, something interesting about people. I feel like ever since, like, I kind of, like, switch that mentality of like just be nice to everyone like it's not that hard like it's common sense it's common courtesy and you're just gonna like get along with everyone like I have felt like such a weight has been lifted off of like 
out of my shoulders like because being kind and like saying hi to people in the hallway or like just doing random acts of kindness like can make you feel like so much better and can help as as well as helping other people's day like it can help, it can help your day um, be better also you can join the minority scholars program uh, and find a community especially we, we are in a predominantly white school if you're if you're a minority or you're interested in activism and you want to find like your community or people that have like similar um in, like interests as you and similar backgrounds and experiences of, as you join minority scholars program join the latino student union join the asian student union join black student union like there's a lot of places in bcc where you can um find like your community even if it's hard to see it in the hallways like there's always going to be a like a space for you and if there isn't one start it because like i bet like there's a lot of people that have been like looking for something like that like i there was no latino student union like my freshman year and even though we had like msp minority scholars program like i still wanted to like connect with other latino students that i didn't know in my school so and i so i started it and i i'm getting to know other people join electives um that also relate to that we just had we're having our first latin american history class um this year and i joined it and there's so many like latino students or students that are interested in learning about latin american history and you can meet so many new friends that you can like relate to because you have like the same background as them or similar backgrounds as them and i think that's something very like um valuable um especially if you're a minority at bcc like even if you have like you know friends like all, all of your friends like you don't a lot of the time you don't have like that same like um like experience in being at bcc so i think definitely join like um those clubs or if you're interested in like advocacy join youth for equity um we have like so many great spaces at bcc that like you can make a difference in our school culture and find your community oh if i can just um like tack on to what you said at the beginning, like you'll find school a lot more welcoming if you're just a little bit more open. Like you'd be surprised if you said like, if you said hi to someone like every day for a semester, you'd be surprised like how much more friendly you'll be with that person by the end of the semester. Like I found for myself at least that like when I walk into all my classes, like if I say hi to a few people and like smile, and you like talk just a little bit before you sit down, it makes your whole like school experience just more enjoyable as opposed to like because if you just sit like if you just come in you sit down and, like you glance up and you're like I'm not sure if I should say hi it's just like a little bit awkward if you start off cl every class feeling a little bit awkward versus starting off every class feeling a little bit happy it makes a big difference. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Parker, can you mute yourself? <laughs> um, but um, okay. In front of so everyone. In front of everyone. Parker. Oh. Um, so anyway, um, guys, what about having lunch? What do you, where, if that's another thing, because it's open lunch, it's sort of hard to sometimes find people to have lunch with. It's also can be a bit of a challenge um, just in terms of, you know, some people like to go out into Bethesda, some people don't, you know, some people have a bigger budget for that. Some people don't have a budget for it. How do you navigate lunch at BCC? Um, and also considering that it is a time to, um, when sometimes clubs meet or when you also go to see teachers for help as well that some teachers have office hours in. Yeah, so I can speak to that really quickly just about um, buying lunch. So I have taken advantage of BCC's open lunch and the fact that I've gone off campus to eat, but I don't think I've ever bought lunch. And it's, it's, I don't think anyone has ever looked down on me. I don't think anyone has ever questioned it. Like if you don't wanna spend any money on lunch, like don't. I enjoy packing lunch and that's, or, or maybe you need to pack lunch or maybe that's the best option for you. There is, I don't think really any stigma at BCC against buying or bringing lunch. And if your friend group is saying, oh, you're such a loser, you're bringing lunch from home, like ignore them. They're wrong. You're not bringing lunch from home is cool. And if you don't have time in the morning to bring lunch, um, it's also more, yeah, but, uh, BCC does 
maybe not have as many vegetarian options. I'm a vegetarian. It's also been one of the reasons I pack lunch in from, from home, but BCC does have free meals right now during like for this entire year, lunch is free. So if you do need food from the cafeteria um, for whatever reason, you, you can get it and it's free. And I don't think there's any judgment there either. It's like uncrustable some days, those are fun and funky. And I don't think anyone's gonna be like, oh, how dare you? Um, and as for where to eat lunch and who to eat lunch with, it's sometimes good to have a more established friend group for that. But like, I don't have an established friend group that I eat lunch with. Sometimes I crash random people that I'm friends with. I like crash their lunches and I've always had fun. I, I get to meet new people in my grade or I latch on to that one singular friend and I'm just like, today, can we just have lunch together and have a seat, like a conversation, just the two of us. And people are usually very friendly. Um, and another thing just specifically about BCC lunch, especially if you're walking through the hallways, is you'll notice that friend groups tend to clump. So like I know friends that they always eat in an F3 hallway, or I knew a group of people that always ate in C2, in a C2 hallway near the math classrooms. Like you'll find that if you're with your friend group and you're like, I don't really know how we're supposed to sit during lunch or what BCC has had so far. Um, identifying a certain place in the building and choosing to sit there every time is a way for your friend group to sort of know where to meet. And also if people maybe want to eat with you, you can be like, oh, I always eat lunch in F3. Come hang out with me in F3. Come hang out with my friends. Um, and just speaking to uh, any kids on the call who are like, uh, you know, um, you're, you're eating lunch with your friend group and you see people that are eating alone and you think maybe they don't want to be eating alone, you know, invite them, maybe think about it. I do that sometimes if I see people eating alone, I'm like, Hey, my friends eating, I reading in C2, if you want to join, like it's up to you, but it's an open invitation. It's a really great way to meet new people at the school. Um, and it's just, it's a good thing to, to do. So yeah, a little act of kindness, like Teresa was talking. About. Um, as resident of the F3 hallway at lunch every day, I definitely agree it's nice to find like a nice little spot and like everyone has their little spot within the spot and like oh you know where the trash can is the gender neutral bathroom and it's a vibe but but besides that like if you're starting out you like it's ninth grade you don't have an established group of friends like Ava you didn't go to Westland or whatever like I that's where you join a club because most of them if yeah no 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 most of them if not all the ones that you happen to join will meet at some point during lunch so even if just once a week you have like this place where you're just going because you know it can sort of be awkward when you're just wandering aimlessly in the hallway like everyone's been in that position but if you just go into a classroom and you're like I know I have I'm supposed to be here and then like someone in the club happens to like be in your like math class and you're like oh what are you doing for lunch tomorrow like that's a great um jumping off point so clubs can't recommend them enough they're helpful for pretty much every facet of um, the school day, school week, school year. Yeah, like Joanna said, and like I've said for like the hundredth million time, I didn't know anyone freshman year and I really, really struggled, especially at lunch. I remember lunch was like the most dreaded part of the day for me because I always saw these people um, in my grade who already had their friend group still and I would like walk by and be like, oh my gosh, I don't know who I'm sitting with. Like I, I had one friend who actually traveled with me from my middle school. Um, she's my best friend. And so I luckily I had her, um, but I could not imagine if I didn't have her. Um, and sometimes I didn't, you know, sometimes she would be out of school um, or be at a club that I wasn't as interested in. And so I was stuck with like the question of who am I going to sit with? And um, I didn't really start doing this until sophomore year. So freshman year was absolutely awful during lunch. But sophomore year, I was um, starting to branch out and I would ask people in my class who I'd, you know, seen throughout the day and become close with, I'd be like, hey, are you doing anything tomorrow? Like, do you mind having lunch? And I've never had someone say no to me, luckily. But if someone had said no to me, I probably would have been like, okay, either they have a really good reason or they're just not someone who I should be friends with if they're going to say no to having lunch. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously sometimes you just, there's no space to have lunch or, or no space in your schedule to have lunch, which is totally um, like common. Everybody's like, no, this week I'm doing this club and this club. But usually you're able to find someone in your classes who you're like, can I eat lunch with just you? Or like, can we study? Or can I come eat lunch with you and your friends? Um, like that's totally an okay thing to do. And I wish that I had started doing that freshman year because it really helped me out sophomore year. Yeah. 
Yeah, sort of adding to what I think Hannah, Johanna, and Eva all sort of touched on is just is just to like kind of be confident about it and don't be like scared. Sort of if there's someone maybe that you like sit next to in your fourth period class right before lunch, you like know and are friendly with, maybe they're not your best friend, but like maybe you want to be friends with them or something, be like, hey, like where do you eat lunch? And like most of the time they're gonna like tell you and they'll be like, oh yeah, come meet with us, and then you'll go meet their friend group, and that's fine. Like people don't pay as much attention to you as you think. No one's going to be like, no, I don't want you to eat with us. Or like that person's so weird for coming to eat with us. Like I know Hannah said she like crashes lunches. I do that too. Sometimes like if you're walking and you see this group of people that like, you know, some of them and you're like, I want to eat lunch with these people today, like sit down. People really aren't going to think twice about that. Um, people are nice, like just sort of be confident and people are paying less attention to you than you think they are. So don't like feel awkward about sort of joining a group for lunch or something, just like do it. And chances are you're gonna have fun and meet new people and make friends. All really good advice. Um, I wanna know, I know that you all have homework. So I wanna try to hit quickly a couple of questions. Also on the social part, you know, one thing that people do, one thing now that's really different, especially for us as parents, um, for your generation is social media. And there are a lot of things that happen on social media. Some of them are good and some of them are miserable. And so do you have any advice for navigating what to do when you're having problems with someone on social media? Either they're posting negative things or comments, or they're sharing something that you thought would be private. I mean, just the kind of general, you know, how do you handle that in high school? Like, what do you do with your social media? So as someone who um, has had like social media on and off, TikTok, oh my, it's truly a black hole. So easy to get addicted. If you find yourself being like, wait a minute, I actually hate it here and what this app is doing to me. It wouldn't be the worst thing to delete it. Like I hate to be that, that guy and just like say delete it, but like, and with stuff that's more interactive, like um, Instagram or Snapchat, like if you do have like that one person, like there's always a way to block them and stuff like that. And if that doesn't seem like a big enough solution, like you always have your friends, your counselor, teachers at school, your parents, like there's people you can talk to about something if it does get really serious. But if it's just, you notice like you're actually not enjoying your time on this app or it's making you feel more insecure or you um, don't like the way that you're interacting with people online and it doesn't like reflect who you are in person, whatever, just take a break. That's what I did. I have Instagram back, but I deleted it for like solid six months. Like, I feel like that's the one thing that's different from middle school to high school. Like just as you get a little, how I feel like um, kind of the worst saying is, but like, as you get a little older, you realize like, actually it's fine if you're not like, on Instagram, like seeing what everyone else is doing or like putting all of your information out there or whatever, like you can just chill with whoever you see in person or whoever's number you have, like whoever you text and stuff like that. Like, it's okay if you're not online in the loop all the time and social media is just truly overrated. So I don't know if that's really the answer you were looking for, but like, it's, it's really just okay to step back. Like you're not gonna be like a loser for it or like, you know, out of sync with everyone. I feel like that's very much a routine thing that sort of goes away as you get more comfortable in your own skin. I agree. I, um, so during last school year, I deleted like all of my social media for probably the entire time because it was just really stressful. And I would just like, since I was home, I would find myself like going on my phone like 10 hours a day, which is insane. And I'm just going to say this. I don't want to be a hater, but like, I think, I think TikTok is unnecessary and very addictive and, I, I would say delete it. If not, like don't, but I don't know how people that have TikTok uh, can cope. Like, can, 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 I don't know. I don't understand, but like, obviously you do you, but for me, it just doesn't work. Like I can't like have like a stable, like schedule in life if I have TikTok. So no, no to that. Um, so yeah, I, for like Instagram, like I deleted, I had this old account that I had a, a bunch of people that I didn't know. And then I deleted it. And then now I have like a really small one with, with like the people that I like, you know, and then I don't really care about like what I post or like what, like the way people see me, because it's just people that know me and that are already my friends. 
and that love me so like I shouldn't care about like looking cool or like looking pretty or like whatever you know obviously like when you look at things on social media that's still gonna have an impact on you and it definitely had an impact on me like when I wasn't on social media especially when during COVID because I wasn't seeing anyone at all and I couldn't even keep up with like people's lives like online so I would only talk to like my five friends like on text and that kind of made me feel a little lonely but I feel like if you do want to like get rid of social media for now I think that's better since you're having like social interactions like today so I think like just don't beat yourself up about like your image on social media and again if someone's like bothering you like like again like you're in high school you're like almost you're young adults you know like you're not in middle school anymore like just be like mature like if the, if you're having a disagreement like try to like share your side without being so defensive or being like rude like and if they're if, if they're not like if it's not going through them then like they're not it's not worth your time you know if you're not getting anything out of the conversation if they're not educating you or if you're trying to educate them but they they just like are kind of being too stubborn about it like that's just don't like burn yourself out for someone that's not going to learn um and just block them if it's not necessary you know and I think also like if it's something petty like don't hold grudges on with people because then you're just gonna like close yourself and like not like kind of be lonely so I think like be social like learn to forgive um and like just stay open and be nice <laughs> Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm actually going to go a different direction than both Teresa and Joanna in terms of my opinion on social media. Not completely, because I totally agree. A lot of it is super harmful, and I've had really bad experiences, um, especially before, oh gosh, I keep saying it, but before I transitioned to VCC, there was someone that I knew who was already going here, and we were not... Um, two people that got along very well. And before I came and she found out I was coming, she actually told me like, when you come to BCC, I'm gonna make your life hell. And all those sort of things that were really scary and awful, you know, as someone who is like coming to a new school. Um, and I found that like, after that, I was really worried about like my image on, especially Instagram. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, like all these people at my new school are gonna think I'm a weirdo because I don't get enough likes on Instagram and all this sort of thing. Um, and especially after like being targeted like that, but I found um, that I just blocked that t that person from all my social media, and then I just had to teach myself to realize that honestly nobody else cares um, about that sort of thing. Like when I was a freshman, I was like, oh my god, everybody's looking at me. Everybody's looking at my social media to see my follower count, and my like count, and honestly, nobody is like nobody cares that much about you all they care about is themselves which is I think something that's pretty common in high school is you're always going to think everybody cares about what you're doing but everybody is so worried about what they're doing nobody has time to think about other people um but then additionally I would say that when I use social media a lot I can see how it like affects my health and I'm thinking more about social media than homework and things that are more important. But I also have been able to use social media to keep in touch with my friends from my old school and um, the old area because I just lived in Silver Springs. So it was super um, convenient to see all my friends um, on social media from my old school. And I would see them and be like, hey, like, can we meet up? Um, I see you, you like going to like this place or like this concert or this artist, like, do you want to go do that together next time they come? And I found that that was a really cool way to stay in touch with people that I didn't get to see every day. Um, but I also totally back what Johanna and Teresa were saying with how harmful it can be. But I also think it's like a two edged sword. It can be super harmful as well as um, super beneficial and helpful. I guess to piggyback off of Ava, like social media, the way that I view, I view social media is a communication platform, like all other like texting, but social media is also a way of you sharing your life, especially like during the pandemic. I'm sure everyone was like on social media, whether it be TikTok, um, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. But using every time like I get on Instagram or I get on like any platform on social media, I keep in mind that social media is kind of a cover-up image for everyone. 
like don't ever view what people are posting as their actual life because everyone has a side that like they're hiding and that also applies like in person too that like no one's gonna show their all authentic self that just like is a part of the human like mindset kind of um but always like keep that in mind and don't go really like comparing yourself and then like the aspects of likes and followers um I think Johan like mentioned it in the chat I really recommend like on social media start removing followers like start removing people that you don't know because honestly you're sharing stuff and if you're like going on the route of being an in like influencer okay I guess like keep all the followers um but if you have like a private account and you're like posting stuff like why do you need the like followers that you have no clue who they are why are they on your page it honestly just like like fills up your feed with like whatever content of like that you don't know so I guess like really just clean spend some time on social media like cleaning and like decluttering um what you don't like really need yeah that is excellent advice two more really quick questions one thing is that what should you know what should parents be asking you about and and how much should you really be telling your parents? Because this is a chance to, you know, at a certain point, you guys are all going to graduate from high school. Even our, you know, ninth and 10th graders will eventually make it out of high school. And um, that, you know, it's a time to where you're starting to launch into being adults. You kind of are almost by junior and senior year, young adults. And so what's the good balance to strike with your parents in terms of how involved or not involved and recognizing that sometimes that depends on the parents too. Yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, so for me, there was a big like language barrier between me and my parents. So it was really hard to like communicate with them about like the programs that I was doing or, or the clubs or even like talking to them about my classes. So it was hard to like communicate my achievements and like the things that I was very involved in and like passionate about. But um I grew to like understand it and not be resented towards that. Obviously they can't do anything about it. So um, I feel like that kind of discouraged me a little bit and like made me feel like my success weren't meaningful because like they weren't knowing about it. Like they just were oblivious as to what I was doing at school. So I guess in like that sense, um, I didn't have like the opportunity to really um, highlight my achievements, but I feel like it got easier. Um, by like understanding like how to communi communicate to them like in my language and in that aspect. Yeah. Um, so for parents, something I think that's really important to know is to not email your students teachers without asking your student first. Like my TOK teacher, just theory of knowledge, it's one of the required classes for IB. He was like, if a parent sends me an email and I haven't spoken to the student about the content of that email, so maybe it's a bad grade or something. I don't even respond to the parent. I just bring the kid over and I ask them about it. So from the parent point of view, like if you're going to be reaching out to teachers, coordinate that with your kid. If your kid doesn't do well on a test, it's 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 not necessarily your teacher, like that teacher's fault. Do not email the teacher and be like, hey, my child deserves an A, because uh, that, might not always be the case. Uh, if you're a student and you're struggling and you feel like your teachers aren't helping, that's a good time to be like, hey mom, I went to my teacher and I said that I was really struggling in math and he told me, too bad, so sad, my class is hard. You should have known that when you signed up. That's a time where you might wanna bring your parents and your counselor. Um, and that's that. those are times students were like, feel free to reach out to parents. I also think, um, if, if you're doing really well in school, or you're really struggling in school, as well, just so-so. Like, I like to keep my mom in the loop. I tell her about a lot of things. I'm really close with my mom. If you're close with a parent, like, keep them updated. You're struggling socially. Maybe your mom has, or your dad, or your guardian has some, like, secret little nuggets of advice. Uh, it's just good to, to, to be on good terms with your parents, especially as you're going into, you know, college, which freshmen and sophomore, that can be really far away, but having a solid relationship with your parents or guardians, if possible, is really good. 
there are situations where that's not possible and that's a different situation and you know avoid parents if, if that's what sort of the vibe of your house um but if you can have good relationship with your parents or your guardians or whoever you're living with grandparents older siblings anything like that uh and it's it's nice to foster a relationship and to tell them you know what's going on in your life here's what's going on in mine um and as for parents uh, helicoptering your student about their grades. If it's early in the semester, you know, maybe they didn't do too well on that first quiz. They got a seven out of 10 and now they have a C in the class. Well, guess what? It's the first quiz of the year. They have a billion assignments coming up that is going, that's going to allow them to, to only improve in that class. Uh, so saying, hey, you didn't do well on the first test. You're not gonna do well on any of the others. You're a failure. Like, don't do that, please. Uh, it's it's good to to try to be understanding, especially students as we're you know trans transitioning back into in person school. It's not been an easy transition for a lot of students. It's been really hard for me um, to to try to come if you're going to be speaking to your student uh, about anything related to school, uh, especially if they're not doing too hot. Uh, to come with that sort of like try to understand where they're coming from because you know high school is not easy. Yeah. So I mean, as Lyric was saying, like this is a big transition period, right? Like you come in, you just got out of middle school and by the end of it, you are leaving high school, whether that is to college, to a career, to whatever else. Like, like Teresa was saying, like you need to learn how to self-advocate. And that doesn't mean like you can't tell your parents what's going on, but I think that the first thing that you should try to do is figure it out between either you and yourself, you and your peers, you and your teacher, but just doing something that makes you feel like uh like uh who awkward moment when you can't remember the word in english but um like a uh standing um an individual right like a person who relies on themselves before anyone else you've been under the care of your parent or guardian or whoever for a long time and honestly like it feels good to grow up and be like hey i actually handled this problem on my own like that's an important skill. That's not to say that you should never turn to somebody for help um, who you've turned to before as like a little kid, but like it is cool to um, kind of reach out to people you haven't reached out to before or realize that you can solve something on your own. Um, I would like to say also like if you're a parent, like stay informed, but also like don't like do everything for your kid because then they're just not going to learn how to be like independent. Um, I come from like an immigrant household. So like, and my parents, like they don't really know much about like the American school system. So like, I've kind of had to do everything by myself. Um, so I really do like when I see like other families that like, you know, that their parents are very involved in like the college application stuff and like everything, you know, but also like, like let your kids like be like kind of grow up as well you know like make sure that like you know they're transitioning into this like adulthood type of phase in their life so like make sure that they also like contribute to it and but also like stay informed about like everything that happens like if you're in this meeting like you're definitely well not definitely but like I bet you're like a very engaged like parent in your kid's life and in your kid's like educational life um so that's great but like make sure that like they are also involved in like their academic success like it's not just you doing it because I've seen that a lot like in other parents you know so just like, kind of like keep that balance and yeah like uh, ask sometimes like asking about college is very annoying but um like be, make sure you're there for your kid like make sure like you you check up on them and like like help them like guide them with information and if you're like an immigrant parent like like look up like college tracks or like like reach out to like the school and like try to get help if you haven't gone through like the call the American application process or like the American school system like really like maybe talk to other parents that have and because that's definitely an issue that like I have faced like with my parents so like I think like starting when you're like don't worry about college too much when you're like a freshman and a sophomore but definitely like keep that in mind and like educate yourself so like you're not like freaking out at the end of the year oh um oh, sorry sorry uh, i'll just say like to give like a little recap i guess it's like parents the best way i could summarize would be like parents like give your kids some breathing room like give them space be available if they need anything and still kind of stay on top of things and students like 
try to be as responsible as you can, but like also keep your parents in the loop. Like I know um, a lot, like I know at least a few of you here, maybe like a lot of you here have parents who kind of like hand you over your work. You're like, like, I know my parents specifically, they have it like they, they like check my emails and like, JD, I see you got like, you got a six out of 10 on this math quiz. Nah, like you can't, no. Like I found that what works best for me is like, don't surprise them, right? Like if I do bad on a quiz or like I get the grade first and I know I did poorly on a quiz, I'd be like, hey dad, like, listen, I did bad on this. Like I did bad on this quiz, but I have a plan. Like I'm gonna talk to my teacher. I know I did it wrong. Like I'm gonna fix it. And instead of hounding me and being like, okay, like, like instead of being like, wow, like you, like you clearly need help. I'm gonna step in. He'd be like, okay, like I'll let you handle this. You got it. Like you have a plan. Just like, don't surprise your parents and try and keep them in the loop at the very least, like academically. Yeah, just kind of building on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I guess just to add on, like parents let your kids open up to you don't force any information out of them and don't say anything you'll ever regret and that applies to like the students too because honestly like any word that comes out of your mouth any action that you do like you will like reflecting back there may be moments that you really regret and four years of high school like if you plan on like going to college and especially like out of state college that's another like five four or five years that you won't be with your parents and four years of high school goes by fast as well like I'm still accepting the fact that I'm a junior and I honestly think that I just graduated from middle school like a year ago but like four years goes by fast don't do anything that you will regret and like as family you should always like be accepting each other talk to one another and like my parents are super busy but we always find the time to like talk to each other find things that we can like bond over like even if it's like on the topic of school like my dad like loves stem and math like I will talk to him about that like I will receive help from him on like that subject so find ways to like stay connected but also don't force information out of each other and like just don't do anything that you will regret in like the future. Yeah, definitely. And kind of circling back to what JD said, I think the most important thing for both students and parents is to build that relationship of trust with each other. Because I think both students and parents are at their worst when they don't trust each other. Like the untrusting parent is the one that's going to like be on their kid and the kid gets more and more stressed and feels like they can't go to the parent. And it's just like, it's a cycle. So as JD said, like tell them stuff, like nine times out of 10, it won't be as bad as you think it will be. Like just just tell them and get it over with. It's it's always the better thing to do. And like definitely balance, like of course high school is a time to like have fun or whatever, but like once you break your parents' trust, it's not something that's easy to get back. I've seen it happen. It is not fun and it's a really difficult thing to go through. So just remember that like once that's gone, it's something that is really difficult to get back. You guys have done such a fantastic job. This has been so interesting and I think will be so helpful to everybody. Um, and I really, really appreciate all the time. And if you just in signing off really quickly want to say like either one last thought of advice that's coming to you listening to all of this or else something you really wish you had done as a freshman or a sophomore that you you missed out on and um, not that you can't still do it now but um, just anything like that but it was really this was you guys are so fantastic it was such great advice and I actually I really hope that everybody takes it too I definitely learned things as well so thank you Carter I can start with you <laughs> Um, I think the most important thing is um, never take, not never take things too seriously, but like, remember that as much as high school is a time to work hard and grind, um, it's also a, a great time in your life that you should be enjoying. So if you're like really, really not enjoying what's going on in your life, it's important to take a step back, understand why that's happening. And then maybe, you know, like join a club as people are talking about, or like, figure out like what's best for getting your work done or like things like that. Like it's never supposed to be miserable. And if it is, then that probably means you need to change something. Great, Joanna. Yeah, I would just say, keep an open mind, you know, whether that's in your subjects in a specific class in like your greater like extracurriculars or whatever, 
Um, like Carter said, if there's something that you realize you actually didn't like, it's okay. Um, I speak from experience. If you're if you've been on one path and you feel like you're stuck on it, it's not the case. People change their their um, direction all the time. Like it's completely acceptable. It's not gonna like you know ruin your chances at college or whatever. I feel like that's a very common thing that I hear among my friends and peers and stuff like that. Really, just you're gonna be doing your best you know, mentally, but also like in your classes, if it's something you're interested in, if it's something that you think is important, if like Carter said at the very beginning, if, if it feels relevant, like things like that are what's most important. And you just have to remember that, you know, sure it's school, but it's not everything. You're still a person, you still have needs. So just make sure to explore all of your options and um, be okay with any sort of sudden change because it's all gonna turn out fine. I wish I had known that from the beginning because I was always kind of like stuck up since middle school and I don't know how much that helped me in the long run. Teresa? Um, so my last bit of advice would be like, stay on top of your work, build your habits like from the beginning. Don't wait until junior or senior year to like, start building like these like healthy habits and healthy coping mechanisms. Definitely like when you have like less like coursework and less stress, like that's the time where you like have to ingrain it in your head, like the things that you have to do. Again, be nice to people. Don't have a superiority complex. Like just say hello, say hi to your teachers. Like don't think you're better than anyone because like we are all human beings and we are all like learning and like everyone has something special about themselves. So like make sure to make some friends, like be friendly to everyone and like be kind to your teachers because they work very hard. And this past year has been also very hard for them. So like, just be positive. Thanks. Ting Ting. And then JD, I'm coming to you. Um, so I guess one piece of advice that I really wish that I took on um, in freshman, like sophomore year, especially is that don't add too much onto your plate and like the things that you should be adding onto your plate should be things that you love doing and like this is throughout the whole high school but like like Joanna said um like things will change but always do what you like what you love and it shouldn't be because oh it'll look good on my resume or oh because my friends are doing it do it for yourself and that also ties into like don't compare yourself to others like entire life like even just apart from high school, like people are always, oh, like that kid's getting this grade, but I've only gotten this grade or like they're doing this many clubs. I have to do that many clubs or like plus one. Like don't go comparing yourself because this is your life and you're like the one that's living it. And just because you're like someone else is living that life, like you don't need to live that life because they have a different set of goals. You have your own goals, aim for your own and stop comparing yourself. Like that's just the biggest piece of advice that like I've ever been given and that I can give to like anyone else. It's very true. It holds true for adults as well. JD, thanks. I'll say like the best piece of advice I've probably got was um just like be upfront with people. Like be upfront with your parents, be upfront with your teachers, be upfront with your yourself especially like I'll, I'll caveat this by saying like don't like not many people do this but I know some people just go to the teacher and be like I don't like you like don't be rude to you okay like it's not gonna help you but like be up front with them if you think you're struggling like you should say something to them if you think you're struggling in school you say to your parents like and especially if you think you're struggling like you should like look at yourself and be like like is this working out for me like is this really what I want to do just like take a little time to think about it and just like be upfront with yourself about whether what's happening is like working or not and what you can do about it. And like, I know like, like I'm saying that, but like that kind of takes for some people I know for me, like I'm still working on it. it. Like it, it's a really hard thing. It takes a long time to like do consistently, but if you're upfront with everyone, especially yourself, it will help you a lot in your long run, especially in school. Great. Thank you, Tommy. Um, I would say um, like making friends can be like super scary. So uh, something I would say is to try and treat people like you're already friends with them um, and treat people like you like them. Because um, when people feel like uh, you like them, then it, 
they kind of like feel good um because everybody wants to feel like um they're well liked and like they have a lot of friends and they'll be really receptive to that and then i also would say um fake it till fake it till you make it with like academics and clubs um just like pretending like you're already like an expert note taker and like you um know how to do debate or whatever but also don't be afraid to ask for help great hannah all right oh gosh last bit of advice um okay really quickly first i'm just gonna do some sga housekeeping just to get that out of the way so uh Big piece of advice is show your barren pride for uh, you know BCC, especially if you're a freshman or sophomore. Sophomore um, spirit in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we've talked about a lot of ways tonight. It's a really great way to you know feel like you're a part of the school, um, and one of the ways that you can do that is by getting merch. Um, so we have our homecoming shirts designed by our SGA. And those are also a fundraiser for big events that your class SGAs might be holding, which is anything from little mixers, which you should definitely attend because they're super fun and also another great way to meet people. And also SGA does put a lot of effort into uh, hosting different events. Um, and that money also goes towards things like prom and graduation, which for like the seniors on this call, we all know those are big and exciting events that are near and very close to us in our future and sort of far away for freshmen and sophomore, but still something to think about. And then I also said that this was a BCC Brigade event, so if there are any students on the call, fill out that form, get points for your grade, get entered in the raffle. Hopefully you all know the deal by now. Um, but yeah, I guess that's my last piece of advice then is, um, you know, BCC is a really, it can be a really fun school to be at, you know, try to get into spirit, joining a club, uh, cheering at the pep rallies, anything like that. Uh, it's a really fun way to feel like BCC is not just the school you attend, but a place that can be really friendly and uh, really, really great. Great, thank you. Sanjana? Um, I would say that my last piece of advice is to just not take everything to heart. Throughout your like years in high school, you're gonna come across many negative experiences. Some may be small, some may be big, but you have to learn how to deal with that and move forward. For example, if you get a bad grade on a math test, instead of just beating yourself up for it and like dwelling on it, um, look at how you can improve that. And instead of just focusing on the negatives, focus on how you can improve yourself and the positives. And then hopefully you can move forward and have a better high school experience if you just, um, if you're not so negative. That's great. Grace? I would say just make sure that you run your own race in high school. I think it's easy to look at whether it be someone on the Zoom or someone next to you in class and think that they're doing every single club and every single hard class and they don't sleep and they're probably getting into a really good college. But I would just say like, make sure that you don't, you're not really that competitive with people because everyone's different and make sure you focus on yourself. I know that I didn't really join a lot of clubs my freshman year. I really just stuck with like my music and being in jazz band. And I think that that was best for me because then I could get used to the school and I could get used to my classes and I can make friends and have fun. And there are later times that you can grind and you can work really hard and work on all those clubs, but just take your own time and run your own race. Very good. Nahom, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here, sorry. Um, I guess some piece of advice that I would give out is like, don't underestimate yourself. Like there will be people who like make comments about a class and like, oh my God, like that was so hard. Like I can't do it. Like, I don't know who can take that class, but I feel like, like everyone's different. Like everyone's manageable, like can manage certain things. Like I feel like, because there's been many times where I took, I heed their advice and I regretted it because I was like, well, I could have done it. I just assumed based off their experience but everyone's experience is different so please don't underestimate yourself you can do it if you really set your mind to it and I know that's cheesy but like I promise you like that really helped me um during the school year so yeah oh that's great Ava and then Sam um yeah I'm about to say something super cheesy and I would just like to say I'm not as cheesy in person, but um, one of the things that I wish, you know, like hindsight is 2020. I wish I could have told myself that um, like just being honest with yourself is super helpful um, because if you're, you know, around people that you think, oh, like these are the popular kids, like let me hang out with them and, you know, rise socially, but that's not really who you are and they're not 
they don't really have the same interests as you as a group, um, it's just not going to be fun for you during high school. And you know, high school is only fun if you make it fun for yourself and really get involved and find friends that you really connect with. Um, and so I wish I had done that more. Not, I mean, my friends are amazing and I love my friends and I have interests with them, but I wish I had done that more freshman year. Um, and I would also like to say um, that a lot of what Hannah says is really helpful. You know, getting into school spirit can actually really make a huge difference because I was not very spirited freshman year. Um, and then sophomore year, I kind of like forced myself to become spirited. And I was like, if I, if I like fake that this school is amazing, it is going to be amazing. And I wasn't faking it. It is an amazing school. Um, and I really love BCC and I hope all of your students um, love BCC as much as we all do. So yeah, thank you guys for coming, by the way. Thank you. Sam, last one, you can back clean up and thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I would say it really just boils down to like enjoy high school, which like obviously you're gonna have a better time if you're not like failing all your classes and like drowning in work. So like ask for help, but also just make time for the things that you enjoy. Um, join clubs you know go to the clubs that you want to go to do your sports go out with your friends like go to football games on friday night like don't get caught up in the details of like every single assignment just make sure you're still taking care of yourself and like enjoying these four years before you leave for college um so like obviously you know focus on your like academic success but don't do that at the expense of your overall well-being perfect Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. Good luck this year. And um, it really was a great, it really was a great and, and a lot of really helpful advice. Um, and I would add not just for high schoolers, but I think grownups could take a few things as well. So take care, everybody. Thanks so much and good night.